The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to this morning's Helpline session with your host, James McDonald. Well, thank you, Andrea, and I would like to start by welcoming everybody to our webinar here this morning. Uh, some of you were wondering if we were going to have a webinar here this morning because, of course, it's President's Day and it's Family Day in Canada. It's a it's a holiday day today. So, um, well, we're going to do this, and we're going to take all your questions, and we are going to uh, make sure that we have great discussion. But of course, it's up to you because we're going to base our discussion on what you want to discuss. So you can type that into the chat, you can ask questions. Now, before we get started, um, last week uh, I did some events in Florida around the state and everywhere that I went, I was in Tampa, Orlando, West Palm Beach, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and all of those places we had Craig Proctor students, uh, students of the coaching program, the Platinum program, uh, come on out to all of those events and I want to thank them for doing that but I also just want to say how great it is to see that you know while we have some absolutely incredibly successful students with the system and some of them do it really quietly uh, and what I mean by that is there's not a lot of fanfare um, they just quietly go about implementing the system and then when you really dig you find out this immense success that they've been having with the system I mean an absolute quantum leap tripling quadrupling their business in in a relatively short period of time um, not easy but definitely involved implementation uh, but the results are astounding and I, I met several um, several students of the system over the the course of last week that way and was uh, just just uh, it's really gratifying um, to know you played a role in that um, but also it, 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 if everybody could see that, it would go a long way into uh, into that social proof of saying, okay, well, this is definitely worth persevering. Um, and you know what? You got to unfortunately, you got to try some things that don't work to hit on what does. But just knowing it is more than absolutely worth it. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. And um, because of the holiday today, we have a light crowd on the uh, on the webinar here this morning. But but Andrea and I are here, and um, we are going to kick butt. I mean, that's what we do. We are professional butt kickers, and that is what's going to happen for the next hour. So anything you want to discuss, any questions that you have, anything to do with lead generation that you might be uh, wanting to talk about or uh, any challenges that you're having with that, any lead conversion stuff we can do. Um, I missed, of course, all the webinars last week because of the uh, the Florida trip, so I didn't get to role play with you, and I, I do love to do that, so I feel like there's something missing in my heart because last week I missed that. You know how that goes, right, Andrea? Yes. Yes, yes, just say yes. Um, okay, well, on that note, why don't we do this? Let's let's start a, a queue here, and Andrea, I'll let, you, uh, I'll let you explain that, and we'll just take as many questions or, or uh, uh, topics as time permits. Yes, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and type your question comment in the chat box or click the hand icon you see on your webinar control panel. We can open your mic. Our first guest is Vic McCarrion. Your mic is open. Yeah, hi. Good morning, James. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you, Vic? You, you, enjoyed, a, you enjoyed a birthday last week, I saw. Well, uh, yeah, last week's birthday. Yesterday was our anniversary. So Very actually, good. Well, uh, today well, is our um, Thank you, thank you. Um, I have a question, please, James. And um, uh, my question is: I got a call from a seller, um, and she wanted to uh, meet with me for home evaluation next day. And I asked her, and I was the last one. She was interviewing apparently three people. She interviewed one. Uh, that day, she called me. Second day, she's supposed to interview two more. When I went. Um, was not she wasn't available the owner actually the son was there and said oh just look at the property had an emergency and my mom couldn't do it and uh, so anyway I as a respect I just went through and and looked at it and he said um, email us the result to my mommy uh, and I knew this wasn't gonna work no. and uh, how could I handle something like that? Apparently, they didn't interview the person before me, too, uh, for some reason. They just interviewed one person one day before. How should I handle something like that? They said, just send the result and things like that. Yeah, well, here's, uh, here's, here's at, at some point, what you have to do is you have to insist. And what mm -hmm. you need to say is this. Look, the only way that I can explain 
what I do to market the property to get you know to get highest dollar for the property is I need to sit down with the two of you and it's going to require a little bit of time but in doing so we're going to save ourselves hours of time in the process and you're going to put a lot more money in your pocket if we do this properly so you know the question is this when is a good time when all of us can get together so we can do this properly because I can't do it by email. Now, here's the reason you have to put your foot down on this. It's because, number one, it is better for them. And more importantly, the reason that they want every all of the realtors to just take a look at the property and email them or what have you is because here's how they're doing it. They are shopping on price. So in other words, whoever quotes them the highest price for the property and the lowest commission, that's how they're going to do this. And they're going to do it that way until somebody explains to them that doing it a different way might be uh, more profitable for them. And that person has to be you because here's the deal. You are never going to be the cheapest, Vic. You're never going to be the cheapest and you don't want to be the cheapest. Not only that, but you're not going to quote them the highest price for their property either. So in other words, based on the way they're doing this, you already know that you are not going to be the candidate. So the only opportunity you have is to explain to them how, how doing it the way they're doing it isn't the best approach for them. You've got to put your foot down and insist that we have a time. And it's not too late to do that. I mean, I, tell me I'm wrong. Do you honestly think that if they're doing it this way, you're going to send them an email with your price? And, I mean, yeah, they're going to get five other realtors three, four, or five other realtors, they're going to go with the highest price because none of them have given a presentation that gives a reason why um, you know, the way they do it is going to net them out more money or what have you. So you know, I, I think that um, I think you can do this because you know you, you really do have nothing to lose. So you can insist on this knowing that you, you really have nothing to lose. Yeah, that, that is correct. I insisted that we need to sit down and, and go over um, how we can sell it to top dollars. He goes, okay, you saw our house already. You went through. Um, and I said, yeah, I have to go in the office and make some calculations. And I need to sit down with you guys. And then uh, basically he said, just email it to us. No, we don't, no yeah. I don't do it that way. No, that, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't do it that way. I'm going to do a fair amount of work. In, in preparation for this, and I need to sit down with you and explain how everything works and what I intend to do with everything. I consider this a job interview, and, and I'm sure you want me to do a good job for you. Is that correct? That if we can sit down together for 20 minutes and go over everything that I plan on doing to, to net you the result you're looking for, I can do a much better job of explaining so you understand. Are you sure you wouldn't consider a, a, a half an hour appointment at your convenience? Just book the damn appointment. Just book the that, appointment with them. I will sense. not be emailing you anything. You're not going to receive an email from me. I don't give you an emailed listing presentation. Not happening. This is the way I do it. Listen, them declining it is no different than you following up with a lead and not booking the appointment with them. There's no difference. But you're not going to get a listing by sending them an email with a price. Not going to happen. So you might as well put your foot down and insist. And here's the truth. If these are smart people, because you're the only realtor of all the ones they're interviewing that are insisting on this, doesn't that speak volumes to your professionalism? And isn't that going to mean that when you're negotiating on their behalf, they've got somebody in their corner who's a pro? I mean, I, I think they would want that. So um, anyway, I think you know what to do here, Vic. Well, that's great. And when I go there, similar situation, would I spend like more than five, ten minutes just looking at the house if it happened again and just leave? Or uh, listen, if, you... here's what I would suggest. As soon as you got there and only the son was there, okay, only yeah. one decision maker was there and who wasn't even a decision maker, you need to treat that like a no-show. Okay, yeah. so what you need to say is this. Oh, okay, well, you know what? We'll, we'll uh, postpone the appointment and we'll reschedule it. And um, and you know I'll follow up with you uh, and uh, and your mom and we can reschedule this because I need you both here to do this properly. And, okay, and that makes and, sense. Yes. Yes, because all you're doing is you're walking into a trap. Now you're walking around. They say, well, look, you've already seen the property. You've already you've got all everything you need to know. Just email me. Well, yeah. Now you're now you haven't set yourself apart. You haven't you haven't had a chance to give them your presentation, which is critical to them and to you. So. Yes. Anyway, in, in future, that's just consider it a 
can, it would be like you set up a buyer appointment and they say, oh yeah, sorry, my mom couldn't make it and they send their 16 year old kid. I mean, it's a no show. Consider that to be a canceled appointment, a no show. You put a big smile on your face, say, oh, no problem. You know what? We'll reschedule. Uh, you know, I'll uh, I'll follow up with you and your mom. We'll set, we'll reschedule a time. But I, I really do need you both here in order to do this properly. There's a lot of things I need to go over, and you both need to be present for it. So that's no problem. I'll come back and we can reschedule. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Thank you very otherwise, much. Yeah, otherwise, you're that falling into the trap. Okay. Thanks, Vic. Thanks. Our next hand raised is Lisa Nash. My, your mic is now open. Hi. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can. How are you, Lisa? Good. How are you doing? I'm awesome. Excellent. I just, oh, okay, those are my postcards. That's great. Um, okay, well, we can start by looking at those. Uh, do you think that they're okay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I love it. So this is a postcard or, um, yeah, or a business a, card? Okay. No, postcard. it's it's a postcard. My, my next uh, uh, job is going to be doing all my uh, business cards um, uh, the way that you guys have, have suggested the four different types of business cards depending on who it's going to. So that's my next project. Yeah, this is really cool. Okay, so here's a couple things that you might want to consider. So you've got your guarantee uh -huh. here. Your home sold guaranteed or will buy it. Um, mm -hmm. here's, here's one thing that I'd like to see you do. I mean, and again, because it doesn't make it any more expensive to just focus in a little bit on the details, one mm -hmm. thing that you might want to make sure is that the call to action is really easy to read. Now, the way you've got it right now is you've changed the um, the background uh, typeset and color underneath the guarantee, which it, it, in, in essence, it separates it. So what you want is this. When you read your home sold guaranteed or will buy it, you want mm -hmm. that call to action to flow immediately below the, the guarantee so that, in other words, it is overwhelmingly clear what to do when you read your home sold guaranteed or we buy it. What you do is to discuss the sale of your home, call Lisa and Steven mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. or get a free special report. Now here's what I'd suggest. I would reverse those two. So first of all, you're gonna get rid of the dark blue and you're gonna keep okay. it exactly the same as everything else. Use exactly the same. Okay, dark writing on a light background. Light blue. So, it's, okay. so in other words, it's clearly connected. This, oh, okay. Those two lines have to be connected to the guarantee. Number two, I want you to reverse them. In other words, what comes first is get a free special report that details this exclusive offer at yourguaranteehomesale.com.ca. Okay. Then underneath that, or to discuss the sale of your home, call Lisa and Steve. Don't do it the other way around. Okay, remember. We want to give them the, the root of least resistance first. You would agree that it would be easier for the prospect yep. to respond by going to the website than to call you. So yes. some of them are going to get spooked and are going to disqualify the offer because they don't want to call you right yet. But that same person may have elected to get information on your website. But because you 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 the call to action was to call you directly first, you scared them away. So just reverse okay. those two. Okay. Um, all right, so that's pretty good. Um, now, number two, what have you got on here? Uh, four big reasons to call Lisa and Steve to sell your home. Uh, more money, that's awesome. I, I, I mean, this kind of thing is fantastic. We sell homes fast, 10 days, 22 days. Boy, the market there is just insane, isn't it? <laughs> it is. That's nuts. Your home is more likely to sell, uh, so that's the rate of expiration, 100% versus 63%. That's, in, that's, that's quite amazing, too. Um, our database of buyers in waiting, we've got 808 buyers. By the way, that's really smart. When you use specific numbers, mm -hmm. um, such a great idea. 808 is so much better than 800. Um, and, you know, 63.1% as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, a, a round number. It just makes it more believable. So what you're doing essentially here is you're giving them what is almost a mini listing presentation. Mm -hmm. right? you're, yep. what you're, 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 you're just prefacing the listing presentation. Now, the only thing that might... You know that I'm thinking like Todd might suggest on something like this is that when you've got a really bold guarantee, and we understand that this is a direct mail piece, so I want you to picture yourself. You go to your mailbox, you grab all your mail. When you yeah. bring it in the house, um, you don't so much read it as you look at it. So yeah. your eye, your eye is immediately going to be drawn to what it's going to be drawn to. What we'd like it to be drawn to is the guarantee. But but really, the guarantee is being overwhelmed by by you and oh. Steve. And I think oh. that when you and Steve <laughs> need to be there, you need to be there because you need to be associated with the guarantee. 
but but it's almost like it is the self promotion first and the guarantee is an afterthought whereas instead okay. we want we want the USP the guarantee should be the overwhelming focus and you guys should be associated with it but okay. but let's say this the guarantee should be two thirds. You guys should be one third. Right now, you're two thirds. It's one third. It's the opposite. Do you think people would be more likely to respond to this because of you guys or because of the guarantee? No, no, for the guaranteed. Right. So, in other words, the guarantee is is more compelling than the two of you. You you guys are compelling in all the reasons and everything you list here, but that presumes that people are yep. going to read it all. But yep. but you don't read your mail like that. You look at it. So. Yep. When I'm sorting my mail, my eyes are immediately going to be drawn to the two salespeople at the top, and I yeah. might I might not read your home sold guarantee your home or I'll buy it before I drop it in the recycling bin. What I'd rather is 100% of people sorting their mail, their eyes are immediately drawn to your home sold guarantee or will buy it because if they're remotely considering selling, highly likely they would be interested in that, and now they would read it. Right. Now, should, should the font be bigger on the offer the or get a special report? Like, should that be bigger no. then? No, because that okay. would just take so. away. That's fine. That would just take away from the eye being drawn to the guarantee. But I'll tell you what, you've got a lot of space here at the top. And if you look at any yep, of the examples sure. on PXL printing, look at Craig's examples, what you'll notice is whether branded or unbranded, the headline, the offer, the WIFM, is we know that that's what we want them to read because someone who's right. considering selling is going to be drawn to that, but we don't want to distract them or 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 you know push them away from that, uh, avert their their attention because the photograph of you is too big. Yeah, and I okay. think that's what's happening here. Okay, you know? and then another question on that is. Um, because we're sending this out to a farm area, should we be constantly ch like updating the, the buyers? Like, should we only print so many and then each time just keep updating the buyers as well as the um, testimonials? So that, I mean... You know what? Not if it works. I wouldn't change one thing. If you generate, uh, you know, if, when, when you're generating response, um, you know, I mean, you can test changing one thing versus another. But honestly, if you send this out next month and it says 812 buyers, it is not yeah. going to affect the response in any way at all. So it's yeah, that's what that's what I thought. But Steve thought yeah. that maybe people would remember some of these testimonials, See, and again, I thought, well, no assumes, one's gonna. That assumes that people are reading all of it. And out. Out. Yeah, here's I the honest agree. truth: is what they're doing is they're looking at it, and if they read your home sold guaranteed, will buy it. They are either considering selling or not, and if they're not, it goes straight in the recycling bin. They probably don't read anymore. If they're remotely considering it. They might put it on the kitchen counter. They might respond the next time you send it out. Okay. You know, okay. Cool. But, and I have um, one quick question uh, as well, just regarding Craigslist Kijiji ads. Um, I just I thought I had recalled Todd saying at the uh, conference that you should no longer mention anything about a list of homes because yeah, well, then you'll be I'm, flagged. Is that true? Or I, I just yeah. yeah on 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 okay. Craigslist um, uh -huh. they're pretty strict about it. Okay, I'm not okay. sure about Kijiji, it's probably not so much. Like you can even buy a live link on Kijiji so you can have a link to your landing page and stuff like that. So Kijiji's not in the same boat as Craigslist. But oh, I see. Craigslist is very strict. Here's what they want you to do. You need to advertise a property for sale. Yes. Yes. Now, you can hide in the description, oh by the way, you know, if you'd like to see all of the properties, um, okay. you can visit, but you can't have a live link. Or you can use your hotline number. They can call it. Yes, I have a hotline. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can do it. But the problem with these sites, depending on where you are, if you post an ad, and 20 minutes later the ad is off the first page, yeah, like you are a, you didn't get anything off it, and b, you now you got to post it every 20 minutes. You know, like you physically have to do it yourself, or somebody has to do it for you. You know, I'm just thinking, could you do it? Yeah. Are there better, more automated ways of, of advertising online? You know what? I'd much rather set up a Google, uh, you know, pay-per-click campaign or Facebook um, ad campaigns, you know, anytime before before that. At oh, okay. the same time, though, the benefit is it's free. Free is yeah. free. But your time yeah. isn't free. So if you're the yeah. one going on there and it doesn't generate you, you know, it's not yielding you what you're looking for, then really there's no Okay. Oh.
Are you there? No. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just. Oh, I, was, I thought I thought I was going to sneeze, so I muted myself oh. quickly. But then <laughs> Bless I, you. I thwarted. Okay. I thwarted the sneeze. Yeah. Good job. Yes, thank you. Okay, so that's anyway, good. Well, go. thank but you so much. Thanks for sending that in, Lisa. That was great, and I'll look forward thank to seeing the, uh, uh, the some small little changes. See how that works. Okay, our next question right, comes. Who's next, Andrea? Our next question comes in the form of chat from Resvan. He says, how do I sort and sift my leads? Do I delete the leads with wrong phone number or people who don't respond to my calls? So far, I've been sending marketing material to their email address. Yeah, no. Um, okay, let me define a lead. Okay, that's what has to happen first and foremost. A lead is somebody or a prospect is somebody who has demonstrated through their actions a motivation to buy and sell real estate. Now part of that is they didn't just find your offer and visit your website, but they also asked for the information by, by describing what they were looking for, describing their home, and critically, they gave up their anonymity. And if they didn't do all of those things, they might be prospects, but we're not going to take the risk. We are going to spend our time with the highest quality of prospects, and those are the ones that do that. So if every day we only generate a couple of prospects that ask for information, describe their property, describe the property they're looking for, give up their contact information, give up their anonymity, if we only generate two every day that do that, that means we have 700 a year that have – they've reached our bar that we've set to consider them to be an appropriate prospect to follow up with. Here's the deal, though. Having said that, Everybody else who doesn't give you complete information, I wouldn't recommend you delete anybody from the database. I think it's helpful to know that a month from now, when that same person requests information, it's going to give you a little trigger because you're going to see, hey, this same person or this same address or whatever, they requested information a month ago. Now, they didn't give their contact details, but what it's telling you is this. They're, they're seeing my, my offer, my messages, and they're becoming more and more motivated. And in other words, they're really early in the process, but you can see that their motivation is building and their timing is getting closer. That's really helpful to know. But here's the thing. If you delete the contact because there's incomplete information, then what they've done in the past is deleted and becomes unknown forever. Your database is capable of holding an unlimited number of contacts, even if the information about them is incomplete. So there is no sense in deleting anybody. It doesn't mean you're going to follow up with them, but at least they're there so that subsequently when, when a lead comes in, we can cross-reference and see if this person has ever requested information before, maybe from that address or, or name, what have you. Um, as far as sending information, I think you have found that it is ineffective to do that. You are sending information that is completely unsolicited. They haven't asked for the information, so you shouldn't really send anything. Um, if anything, when someone leaves only an email address, what you really want to do is you want to send them an email with a link back to the landing page and say, um, you know, to receive your uh, to receive your complete list of properties or whatever it was they were looking for, please. Um, uh, please resubmit your form, being sure to include all required fields, and then just send them a link right back to the landing page, and the onus is on them. But we're not – listen, we're not going to make them a good prospect. They either are or they aren't. We're not going to make them motivated. They either are or they aren't. So we can prompt them to say, hey, look, this is what you need to do if you really want this information. You can't send me an email and get it anonymously. You've got to fill out the, the form. On the web page. So here's a link back to the web page. If you want to get the information, please, you know, accurately uh, uh, include all fields uh, of the web form or, or all required field, fields of the web form. And you know what? Nine times out of ten, they're not going to do anything with it. But one time out of ten, they will. That's your lead. Um, I hope that helps. Okay, we have a hand raised from Dylan Buknovich. Your line is now open. Unmute on your end by hitting the red mic button. Give you a few seconds to do that. Okay, go ahead, Dylan. Sorry, guys. That was an accident. I did not mean to do that. That's okay. Yeah, no Hold problem. on a second. I'll mute you back. Okay, we have a question from Verlin. It says, I'm having a struggle with my success website representative. 
to agree to copy one of our Platinum Coaching members' campaign. I advised them that I wanted to uh, run the two same campaigns. Okay. Um, uh, they are well, saying uh, it's a too close a proximity to each other. But that's not their uh, – there's got to be more to the story. They're, they're saying you can't run the same ad. Is that what I'm hearing here, Andrea? And I'm reading the question. The yes, that is exactly. Um, Verlin just confirmed. <laughs> yes, that's what ex that's what they're saying. And it's Success website that's making this call. Yes, but you know that where um, and, and where is the ad being run? Where do they? Where? Where? What medium? I'm reading it really quickly, and it looks like uh, another member is also having the same problem. They're saying they can't run it. It's Facebook. Well, which is very odd because. Um, you know, Facebook do not offer exclusivity, and Success Website certainly doesn't offer exclusivity. So unless something's changed as far as that goes, um, yeah, that I mean, essentially what it sounds to me like they're saying is we've already offered exclusivity to somebody else, so we can't offer it to you if we've already offered it to them. But wait a minute. You could go on Facebook yourself, and you could go into your account, and you can – run an ad anywhere you like if you do it yourself. What they're saying is they won't help you do it because they've offered exclusivity to somebody else. That's what they're saying. They okay. said, well, uh, I, I yes. did not know that, and I will look into that and see if that is indeed their policy, but I would find that to be a pretty big mistake on their part if they all of a sudden out of the blue decided to um, offer exclusivity on something that isn't exclusive. Like This is the thing. Facebook does not offer exclusivity. It's not um, – you know, you can go and do it. Anybody can. They're not. You're not blocked by doing that. So, um, yeah, I'll have to find out. But I, I really don't want to comment on it before I understand. You know what exactly? Uh, they're not. Is it that they're not helping you, or they're telling you you can't do it? Uh, either way, it, it doesn't sound right to me. So let me uh, let me look into that. And, and Andrea, maybe. Um, Maybe you and I can can figure out what that's all about. That's very strange. Yeah, we're having it, – it's very odd because we're having a few more members saying they're getting the exact same kind of run-in with success. So it's okay, more now, than here's one. A, here's an interesting question. Can you run a different ad in the same area? Or is it the problem that you can't run yes. the exact same you ad? You can run a different one but not the same. And here's something else I know is – Okay, so run a different one in the meantime. Run a different one. That's all. Just run a different ad. I mean, the ad doesn't have to be completely different. You're still going to offer a list of properties. You're still going to offer an online home evaluation, but you can change the wording in the ad. You can change the photograph. You can change the, the map. You can change enough of the ad so it's different in the meantime, but and then we'll get to the bottom of it. But um, yeah, this is troubling. Yes, you may also want to be in touch. Um, the specific member they're speaking of has been represented on a few of our webinars. Um, so it's strange that he would come on and say, you know, copy what I'm doing, and then success would say no. I also suggest getting in touch with Christy Filion because she is the one who's been inviting them on um, right. to show what success they've been having. Huh. And then when you try to do it. And, <laughs> right. So that's really weird. Um, so, okay. Alexandra types in. Alexandra, I'm not. This is a. We can't. Um, I don't think we should be getting into more of this. What do you think, James? We would probably need more information. Yeah, so I, I, yeah because we, you're you're asking the wrong person. I. If this is happening, then we will get to the bottom of it. And we'll figure it out. But yes, this this is troubling because um, it really shouldn't be that way. And uh, so let us let us get to the bottom of it, and uh, and then we'll we'll figure it out for everybody, and at least fix it or at least be able to report what the what, what the deal is here. But I can tell you this. Any human being can go onto Facebook. You can go into your account and you can run an ad, any ad you want, anywhere you damn well please. I know that for sure. In other words, you are not at the mercy of success website to run an ad on Facebook or anywhere else for that matter. Okay. All right. So here's a question. A friend joined my office last week and she wants to work with me and my business partner. On one hand, I see a lot of benefit and potential. She has what I don't have in the DISC profile, high S and C. On the other hand, I'm not sure I need a business partner, but more of a team member. I need yeah. help making a decision. Yeah, it's funny, you know, um, you know, we've been doing this for a long, long time. And um, over many, many, many years, um, what we've discovered is this. 
so very rarely does a partnership work the way a team does with a team leader. Now, the obvious exceptions to that are, you know, husband and wife teams. They work all the time, you know, and you can build your business that way with the husband and wife team. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about when you have a business partner. Um, in the in the beginning, you know, it may go well, and you might have somebody that is um, good at your weak points and vice versa. But inevitably, what we've what has been our experience is that inevitably these relationships collapse for various reasons and what never collapses is when you are the team leader and instead you're not bringing on a partner what you're bringing on are basically spokes in the wheel that are good at the elements involved in your system and they're not your partner they are you know they are working as team members of yours and they can be very what you are uh, what you are not and that is, you know, because that way your business doesn't live and die with that person. In other words, if you bring on somebody who's really good administratively and they set up your systems and they're extremely organized, they're consistent and predictable, they're great with, um, you know, all of the paperwork and timing and everything like that. And for whatever reason, that person leaves. That's fine. Everything is documented. You can find someone else, a CS type personality, and they can fit right in with that. It's not a collapse. It's not the end of the world. And you're not paying them 50% of the revenue of the business, you know, for what is an administrative position. So ultimately, if you're going to build the system successfully, you've got to look at history of thousands of others who have done it. And overwhelmingly, what you'll find is this: in a partnership situation. It, it overwhelmingly, inevitably comes to a bad end, whereas overwhelmingly, when you are the team leader, it comes to a very positive um, you know, conclusion. If it ever, I mean, conclusion's a bad word, it's always growing, but the point is, is, is there's far less conflict, and um, you'll be thankful that you built it that way. Remember, you bought what is a millionaire franchise model, and the millionaire franchise model does not require you going out and hiring a partner. It is you are the team leader. And if you need help in various areas, that's what the millionaire maker system is designed to do. That's what Craig did. That's what all of the most successful students have in common. They built it following this model. So I cannot recommend it. You do the same thing as well. Okay, our next question from Resvan, where do I find the information about different types of personalities? Uh, in your workbook, uh, first of all, uh, when you came to the super conference in the workbook, you'll find a tab that says identifying your personality. So there's all kinds of information there. If you really want to get detailed, you'll notice that on the, um, on the disk personality test at the bottom, there's a phone number um, for, uh, I believe, a company used to be called Moeller & Associates. I don't know if it still is, but you can get really detailed information directly from the company that provides the disk test. They're licensed. They're the only company licensed to actually sell and administer the disk personality tests. Um, so they've got tons and tons of information, but there's more than enough in your workbook for you to really understand, number one, how to use it you know, for yourself and, and building your team and your prospects as well. Um, but hiring and training and all of these things. There's tons of information right in your seminar workbook, much of which we got to at the super conference, but much of which we did not. So I would start there. Okay, and Alexandra follows up with her question, how does co-branding work with team members? Should, is there a contract to be signed? Yeah, well, absolutely. There's, there are position contracts of which in which you have them, and um, this is yeah. I mean, obviously, that's really important. Is that you know you are the business, and you are providing them with your customers. Okay, so yes, you need to have a contract, and we've provided you with all of those things. Remember, you're not inventing the wheel. Nobody is inventing the wheel here. Or reinventing the wheel. It's already been invented, not just invented, it's been perfected. So nothing needs to be left to chance. Nothing needs to be, um, you know, maybe I should do it this way, maybe I should do it that way. When it comes to growing the team, it is well established and documented, including all of the contracts. Um, and I, yeah, I would really recommend that you resource that as Andrea is showing you right here. 
um, and do it that way. Listen, if you bring on a team member and they refuse to adhere to the contract or sign it, it speaks volumes to their intentions. And you might as well know immediately then find out two years later that you know their intentions are to um, you know to leave or to you know uh, leave this badly. Let's just say, um, you know, I think that's important. Now, as far as co-branding, here's how this can be to both of your advantages. One of the biggest benefits that Craig had as he was growing his team was what he discovered was this. The other realtors were saying, and I'm taking you back to the mid-1990s here when Craig was growing his team, which was really quite unheard of for a sales rep to have a team. you got to remember, in the early to mid-1990s, realtors worked as individuals, and you know that was most common. Now, what Craig discovered is even though he was a sales rep, not a broker, just a sales rep, he too could he could build his business any way he wanted to. He could get help. He could bring on other licensed agents as well as just assistants administratively. And he was really the pioneer in doing that. But here's what he discovered. When he did that, when he brought on other licensed agents to handle the overflow of business so that he could focus on the marketing, what he discovered was this. The other realtors in the marketplace, the other, the other um, top producers, what they would do is they would tell – you know the sellers, the community. Well, when you when you list with Craig, you don't get Craig. He pawns you off on an assistant, right? And that became a barrier that needed to be overcome. Okay, so the barrier is you go to a listing presentation, and the other realtors have hammered it home that hey, you can list with Craig Proctor. Just know you're not getting Craig Proctor. You're getting one of his flunkies is how they would position it, as they should. That's smart. Yeah, they could say, when you list with me, you get me. You get my undivided attention. It's me, and I do it all. So Craig thought long and hard about this. How do I combat this? And what he began to do is, in all of his marketing, he promoted the team concept. He promoted the idea that when you hire me, you don't just get me and all of my marketing and advertising expertise and dollars, you also get my team of individual specialists working on each individual element of your transaction. And you would have every team member there and their position, what they do, buyer specialist, you know, Lindy will, will go out finding buyers who are looking for a property just like yours. Does your, does your traditional realtor do that? Of course not. They can't do all these things. And what happened is Craig changed the narrative from when I hire you, I only get you trying to do everything all at once to when I hire Craig, for the exact same price, I'm getting an entire team of specialists working on my behalf. No wonder Craig gets such better results than everybody else. All of a sudden, the other realtor said, you know what, maybe a team approach is better. So when you bring somebody on, you're going to make sure that you are promoting in your marketing, especially that starts in your presentations because it's free. You are promoting the benefit that unlike the traditional realtor, when they hire you, they're not just getting you. They're getting your team of specialists working um, on their transaction. And clearly, that yields a better result. If you have more people, more hands on deck working for, the, for the, a better result, you will get a better result than one person doing the same thing. So this is a huge advantage to you, but you've got to use the contracts if you're going to get good people committed to excelling on your team. Good question. Okay, Karen says, when you send an email back to the prospect with a link to your landing page, do you include your signature so that they see you are a real estate agent? Yes. As soon as the prospect requests the information, everything that they ever receive from that point forth will be branded to you, if I got the question right, Andrea. Yes. They've requested it. Um, but, well, let me Listen, um, The reason we're unbranding it, the reason we're unbranding it is because to get them to request the information in the first place, the focus needs to be on the information. So doing that in a non-threatening environment will yield you more leads than branding it. So we, we downplay the realtor and we upplay the benefit, the offer. But as soon as the prospect requests the information, it is at that time where everything they receive is then branded from us. 
And let me clarify, I, I think I might have asked the question uh, incorrectly. So basically it looks like what's happening is the prospect has requested the information, but there's possibly no phone number. So what our member is doing is emailing them back a link yeah. to go back to the landing page. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, and that should come from you. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fine. I, you know, I mean, you could try it a different way. You could try it from a, an information source email address type of thing, I suppose. Um, but, you know, honestly, uh, you're, you're, if the, pro, the, the purpose of the website is to act as a filter. So remember that. The, the, the website isn't designed to get everybody to request the information. It's designed to get the good ones, the serious ones, the ones that are ready. Those are the ones that are going to request the information, and those are the ones that are more likely to give up their contact details. So we're not trying to get hundreds of them. We're trying to get the good ones. So you, you know, when you send this email, if you send out 10 and one of them goes back to the landing page and, and correctly fills out their information, count yourself very lucky that one in 10 did that because most of them will not. Don't expect that. So whether you send them that email branded from you or whether it's coming from, you know, uh, Lakewood Real Estate Info, you know, uh, regardless, you're not going to get massive uh, uh, response to it, you know, anyway. Okay. Christy types in, earlier a member mentioned four types of business cards. Are you able to say what those are? I'm assuming one geared towards buyers, sellers, and referrals. Can you clarify? Who, uh, I'm sorry, Andrew, I didn't hear that conversation. Four types of business cards? I don't, I don't quite remember that? that either. I know we were speaking with, we discussed if a business card was in process, but we'd never discussed the four types. And that was with Lisa Nash. Yeah, no, I don't. Uh, I don't recall that either. And you know what? All I can tell you is this. You know, there's this guy. His name is Craig Proctor, and he's really pretty successful. I mean, over 25 years, the guy did pretty good. Um, that's why we're all on this webinar together because we all agree on that. Well, I can tell you that Craig had one business card. He did not have four. He had one, and he did very, very well with that one business card. And you know, uh, the business card was not only a resource to get information to contact Craig or whatever the team member was, but it also promoted, uh, you know, a buyer and uh, a seller USP on either side of the business card. And that was more than sufficient to sell thousands, thousands and thousands of properties uh, over the course of his career. So remember that. We always got to go back to that. What did Craig do? Because if Craig did it, you can't argue it was pretty damn successful. If I do that, I'm probably on the right track. So, you know, now that doesn't mean that we might discover that something else works well too, but just as a, as a base point, if you do what Craig did, you're probably on the, on the right track. Okay, Ellen typed in, I'm still confused about branding unbranded response to a contact. If a prospect requests a report, we are supposed to send it out in a hand addressed envelope with no return address. At what point do we send yeah, anything? But when they, but hang on, when they open it, when they open it, there's a cover letter from you, right? Cover letter from you. It says enclosed is a free special report that you requested and it's all branded to you. The only reason we're using the number 10 envelope is so that it gets opened. So don't confuse the two. The, if you're gonna mail stuff, okay, you write it a plain white number 10 envelope and you can have a return address on it, but it doesn't have to say Joe Smith Realtor. It can just have a return address, all right, as it should, and uh, handwritten, live stamp. The reason you're doing that is so that it gets open because everybody opens a letter, right? But if it looks like junk mail, well, then they're less likely to open it. So they open the letter. When they pull it out, there's a cover letter, and the cover letter is branded to you. And it says, a couple of sentences, please find enclosed the free special report that you requested on my hotline in regards to 11 costly home inspection pitfalls and how to avoid them. If you have any questions or any, uh, any real estate needs at all, please feel free to reach out and call. I've enclosed my business card or my contact information is below. And then the next page is the free special report. But it's branded. It is branded to you. Even the free special report, you'll notice that 
um, there's room on the back to have your contact information on the free special report. Remember this, the reason that we're, the reason that we take away the branding or at least the self-promotion is because it allows the prospect to respond because they're focused not on the scary salesperson, but on the information. But watch this. Once the prospect requests the information and now we know who they are, now we can follow up with them. And to do that, we're branded. We're going to call them number one tool for lead conversion. It's 99.9% .9 your phone call and 0.1% everything else but your phone call. So this letter we're talking about represents 0.1. You know, all everything is 0.1. 99.9% of the follow-up is you calling the prospect and having a conversation with them. You are the realtor calling the prospect, 100% branded to you. But we need them to respond in the first place. And what you've discovered is more of them will respond if the focus is on the information, not on the salesperson in the marketing. That's all. All right. Good question. Okay. Maureen asks, how soon should we call a lead? For example, if the lead comes in at 10 p.m., do I call them at that late hour or do I wait for 8 a.m. the next day? Well, I'll tell you what. You know, if you're awake and you know they're awake, um, you could call them. You know, I mean, I think 10 p.m. might be pushing a little bit because, um, you know, uh, you'd have to preface the call. I mean, you'd have to be really skilled on the phone. Like I would call Andrea. Let's say Andrea responded to information at 10 after 10 p.m. And I know Andrea's got a little boy, and um, but I would know that, of course. So I call, and I'm really hoping, please don't tell me that I just, like, woke up your kid or – something like that. I don't want this to get off on the wrong foot. So I, knowing that, I might preface it and I might say this. Oh, hi, Andrea. Uh, it's James McDonald with Craig Proctor's office calling from Remax. And Andrea, the reason I was calling is I just got your request for information regarding the value of your home online. And, you know, obviously I noticed that you were obviously awake. Otherwise, I wouldn't have called at this late hour. Um, but I just want to let you know I am right now preparing the information for you and you should receive that in your email shortly. Just wanted to call as a courtesy and let you know I was doing that. I hope that's okay, Andrea. So I'm going to kind of see, cause I want to call you cause here's what I'm thinking might be a great scenario. If it's 10 o'clock at night and Andrea is the only person awake and Andrea is on her computer and she is focused on real estate. Her brain right now is occupied by real estate and it's 10 o'clock at night and maybe this is imminent. Like you're a pretty serious prospect. You just requested info. You gave all your contact information. You told me all about your home and it's 10 o'clock at night and everyone is asleep and your brain is in real estate mode. You know what the truth is? I really like to talk to you right now. Now, I wouldn't recommend you interrupt your life to do that. Not at 10 o'clock at night. I mean, if you're busy and you, you know, that's your time. But what I'm suggesting is this, if you're available, if you're available, you know, the prospect is, Yes, of course you could call them back, but all I'm saying is because we're gifted in communication, we're going to make sure that knowing that we're kind of doing something that might not be well received, you're calling them after 10 p.m., you kind of need to bring that into the conversation a little bit. Say, you know, I realize it's a little bit late here, but obviously you're up, you know, you're, you're requesting the information, so really. I'm not you know, disturbing your family, but I did want to give you a very quick courtesy call here, Andrea, and let you know I'm preparing the information that you're looking for right now, and you should receive it immediately. I just want to let you know that I hope that's okay. And hopefully, with those kind, helpful words, the prospect will say, oh, no problem. Yeah, no, no, no problem. I was up. That's the best case scenario. And if you do this right, I think you'll hear that more than, you know, thanks for waking up the baby. It only took me friggin' 14 hours to get, get her to sleep, right? Um, you know what, too? Like anything else, you'll discover this by trial and error. And the whole point, though, um, not to go on too much of a tangent, but I'll tell you what. The whole benefit of the system is that if you're generating leads at 10 o'clock at night, it means you're generating leads 24-7. And if you're generating leads 24 hours a day, seven days a week, then the whole benefit of that is 
you don't need to drop everything at 10 o'clock at night to go follow up with a lead. But you can if you want to, but you don't have to. And that's what that's why Craig invented the system this way is he never wants any one single prospect to be so important that it alters the quality of life. So if at 10 o'clock at night you are watching a movie, then you don't need to interrupt the movie to follow up with any one given prospect because they're always going to be there. They're, they're, not only is that prospect going to be there, but, but there will be many other prospects as well. They're constantly filling your funnel. Ads are always being run. Your website is always generating more leads. No one prospect becomes so important that you have to pause the movie, leap up at 10.15, and go and follow up with a, with a prospect. If you want to and can, you can, but the idea is that you have the peace of mind knowing that you don't have to do that. And that's why Craig invented the system the way it is. It's so that we can have constant flow of prospective business and it doesn't have to adversely alter the quality of life that you live. All right. A little tangent there, Andrea. It's okay. We have Karen. How can we say we are sending information to a prospect when they respond to an ad for distress houses in a city that covers a large area and their criteria is very limited? Should we not be talking with them first? Um, okay, so let's uh, let's go over this again, Andrea. So the prospect requested information on a home on homes to buy or to sell. They responded to information on a distressed homes ad. Okay, so they want a free list of distressed sale properties. Okay, well, first of all, let's establish this. There is no definition for distressed. Any property is distressed, okay? There is no dictionary definition. Distressed could mean it's been on the market for longer than two weeks. Distressed could mean it's had a price reduction. Distressed could mean um, it's a fixer-upper. Distressed could mean it's a divorce, right? Um, there is no dictionary definition for what a distress sale is. So bearing that in mind, any and all property. See, some of you think a distress sale means a bank foreclosure. That's not true. If I look up distress sale, it will not say in the dictionary that is referred to in real estate as a bank foreclosure. Not true. No, a bank foreclosure is a bank foreclosure. A distress sale is a distress sale. It's a home that needs to sell. I like Lester Cox invented, or was it Bill Watson invented, um, unclaimed homes. Free list of unclaimed homes. Sounds like a pretty good deal, right? These are unclaimed homes. What is an unclaimed home? What's the, what's the definition? Well, any home that hasn't been claimed, it hasn't sold. That's called everything. So anyway, the reason I bring that up is because the first thing we have to wrap our heads around is this. When the prospect requests a distress sale list, what they're asking for is every single property that matches what they're looking for, every one of them. We're not going to omit any properties, private sales, pocket listings, whatever they are. We are going to provide them with every single property that matches what they're looking for. Now, it sounds like your challenge is this. What they're looking for, there is very little inventory. Okay. So in other words, they request a list of distress sales in a given neighborhood. But in that neighborhood, there are only a couple of listings. Well, obviously, that means you're only going to be able to send them what is available. Now, you're then following up with them with a phone call. And our conversation goes like this. When I'm making the offer, I say this. I say, hey, you know what? Are you only interested in this neighborhood or would you be open to other areas as well? And they say, nope, we're only interested in this area. We, we either are going to move to this neighborhood or nowhere else. And then we say this, okay. Knowing that, this is very key. It is imperative that when a property comes on the market or is about to come on the market in that neighborhood, that you be the first buyers to know. You need to beat out other buyers. Would you like me to email you every day the moment those properties become available to notify you by email of those properties being available so you can beat out other buyers to the same listings? It's absolutely free. There is no obligation to buy anything. Would that be something that would be of interest to you? Do you understand the benefit of that? The prospect says, yeah, absolutely. Could you do that? And I say, yes. But first, I need to sit down for 15 or 20 minutes and go over all of your criteria so I can be sure that we are looking at the right properties. The properties in the neighborhood are not all the same. Some of them vary. And I want to have a really good understanding of what you're looking for. So if we can get together for 15 minutes, do a really good job, take down exactly what you're looking for, 
then we can get you set up properly. There is no cost to it. Don't bring your wallet or checkbook. You're not obligated to buy anything, but I want to do a good job for you, as I'm sure you want me to do. When have you got 15 or 20 minutes? What would be best? Days, evenings, weekends? What's good? And we book an appointment with them. And that's the way you've got to do this. Um, the point is, you could argue that if there is few properties available, all the more reason why they need to know about the properties before any other buyer. And you are the provider of that information. So yeah, you can go ahead and keep doing what you're doing, but here's the problem. When you find out about a property for sale in that neighborhood is after other buyers, not all of them, but some other buyers have found out. Want to know why? Because the most motivated buyers in that neighborhood, they've taken steps to make sure that they get the information. So if you haven't done that, then you're at a tremendous disadvantage and you're going to find out about the properties after they've already been sold to other buyers. I suggest this. You should be the first and I can do that for you. When have you got 15 minutes to take down exactly what you're looking for so we can do a great job? I make sure that when the perfect homes come available, I notify you instantaneously so you're the first to know. Sometimes I might be able to find out about the property before it's even available for sale if stars align. Would that be of interest to you? Like, make it sound awesome. Okay. I got a little hype there, Andrea. I get pumped when I talk about this kind of thing because, man, you can really use your words to compel the prospect to get it, to really understand. Yeah, that is a great way of doing this. And let me get this straight. I don't have to pay for it, and there's no obligation to buy anything. Yes, that is correct. All I want to do is a good job for you, as I'm sure you want me to do. So let's get together for 15 minutes and do it right. You book appointments all day long with a motivated buyer like that. Um, okay, uh, Andrea, thank you so very, very much for your help today. Happy President's Day or Family Day if you're up in the Great White North. And, um, and we've got some other, other uh, webinars coming up this week as well, Andrea. And I also see that you've got some information here about the upcoming boot camp. There's a, there's a platinum boot camp in Fort Lauderdale. And, of course, that coincides with the Super Conference in March. So hopefully you guys have got that circled in your calendar, the 12th and 13th. Um, in Fort Lauderdale and of course we've got Anaheim coming up in April that's gonna be our biggie and we've got Dave Linegar is our keynote speaker and for those of you that are Remax people Dave Linegar the founder of Remax um, is gonna be our keynote speaker and he is needless to say um, brilliant fascinating uh, real supporter of the Craig Proctor system so you want to make sure that you're in Anaheim in April for that so uh, later on this week we'll be doing some role-playing ad clinic We've got all kinds of other webinars lined up. Andrea, until then, thanks for your help as always. Thank you, James. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a wonderful afternoon. Talk to you all very soon. This officially ends the webinar for today.